Welcome, welcome, boys. This is going to be a headrest review of the 2001 Dodge Ram 1500 Sport. 4x4 with the factory off-road package. Magnum V8. So, normally when I do a headrest review, I give you a history of the vehicle, how it came to be. Then we get into the headrest review part. So this vehicle, for the viewers who've been here for a minute, know this isn't my vehicle, this is my dad's truck. So I do know quite a bit about the history of it. It's a 2001, he bought it brand new in 2001. And that came after he had bought many other brand new cars before. He used to buy a brand new car every few years. The earliest one I can remember him having was this old Ford Escort. But predating me, he had a Ford Mustang. I think ah, that's what I was conceived in the back of, but that might have been a Cutlass. I don't remember. Anyway, so he gets himself an itty bitty teeny weeny tiny Escort back in the, oh, this had to be what, early 90s, late 80s, whenever they had those things. So he had one of those guys driving around. And then he bought a Chevrolet S10 pickup. I remember that one the most, because he had it for many, many years. It was a five-speed manual. And then he got his first, I, I don't know if he bought either of those two brand new. I was too young to remember it. But I do know he, the first brand new one that I can remember him actually buying, and I can say for certain that he bought was the Jeep Wrangler, and I believe that was a 92 or 93. I believe it still had the square headlights, kind of like the Jurassic Park Jeeps had. Didn't have the round ones. So he had that. That was also a manual transmission, and uh, my mom didn't like it. She told me to get rid of it. She didn't like it because it was like driving a box. And uh, he didn't like it because I think he got the one with a really tiny engine. It was like a four-cylinder or something, and... I, I thought it was a pretty cool Jeep, but, uh, you know, it didn't have any power, according to him, and blah, 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 blah. So he wanted something with a little more power. He always wanted, you know, like, you know, a big truck, four-wheel drive or something. So he ended up buying the Dodge Dakota Sport. It was not four-wheel drive. It was also a manual transmission. And, you know, he, he had started working at Chrysler a little before he bought the Jeep, I believe. So that's how he got the Jeep. Um, because they give you that employee discount deal. So he took advantage of that. Bought the Jeep, bought the Dakota, the same deal. Still worked at Chrysler when he got the then 2001 Dodge Ram. He bought this thing brand new after the Dakota because, you know, he, he was, said, oh, you know, I really need a, a big, large four-wheel drive. I want a big truck. And... My mom was like, I'm tired of you buying new cars every year. Every other year. Blah, blah, blah. You never get ahead in life if you're always spending money on automobiles. So, she said, this better be the last one you buy, so you better buy whatever you want. You know, make sure you actually want it, because it's going to be the last time. So, he bought this thing pretty much optioned out as the automatic transmission. This was the first vehicle that I knew him to ever own that was an automatic. I believe it was his first first automatic transmission car in 2001. So, has the four-wheel drive, the V8, everything that he wanted. It has the factory off-road package. So, it didn't come lifted or anything, but per him, it came with those really, you know, like a big gap between the wheel and the fender and he was always thought that looked kind of stupid for a truck so that's why he put these big 35 inch tires on it on the factory 17 inch Dodge wheels and what is going on up ahead okay I guess these guys are gonna move out of my way anyway so he ended up buying or uh oh shit lost my train of thought you guys are like cock blocking the street. Alright, they're gone. Alright, so, uh, shit, where do the first 
Big Beast, V8, etc, etc. Don't know. Alright, so, shitty editing work there, but I had to remember exactly where I was, because I forgot! I, you know, you get the, got the 35, that's where I left off. Left off at 35-inch tires. So he gets those, and so it sits much higher now, but it's not lifted. He put like half-inch spacers on the front, and that was it. Just to lift the front up a little, because it kind of sat, I guess, with the nose down a little for aerodynamic purposes, fuel efficiency purposes, etc. And so he went ahead and and you know, and he drove this thing every day to Chrysler, from Crystal City to Fenton, um, which he said it got decent fuel economy on the highway, not so much in town, but I would agree this thing gets shit in town. Let's see, what does it get? Average miles per gallon, 8.3. 8.3 miles per gallon, boys. So, uh, yeah. It rides really freaking rough. It never rode great before, but I tell you what, I always did like driving this thing as, uh, when I was younger. Because I remember I bought my first Corvette at 18. And I used to drive it And, you know, the, the Corvette all the time was like, yeah, chick's gonna dig the Corvette. That's how you get all the bitches that fat makes them wet. Like, no chicks even dug the Corvette. But when I got to borrow this Ram and drive it occasionally, dude, all the chicks digged it. Because you know how, like, if you're a guy, you know how, like, let's say you're working somewhere, just like you and a bunch of other guys, and, like, there's a hot chick. You're like, holy crap, that chick's hot. And you're like, hey, other guy, come check out this hot chick. So then, like, you know, some guys will, like, show up and, like, try to kind of pretend to, like, they're doing something, but they're really just there to check out the hot chick, okay? It was because I'm a guy and I know that, and that's what we do. When I would take this truck places to like the drive-through, for example, at like Jack in the Box or somewhere, when I worked at the emission station, I'd go there and grab tacos and shit for the rest of the dudes when we were out working, or you know, they would, or you know, whatever. So if I had the truck, I'd be like, yeah, I'll go, I'll go, I'll make the taco run or whatever, the food run, the soda run, and now, mind you, I'm the same guy who goes to the drive-thru all the time in the Corvette that I don't get a, I don't get a second look at. But when I roll up in this Ram, because it was fairly new at the time, shiny, black, you know, the whole nine, I roll up, and it had, like, big, mean dual exhaust he had put on it, too. I think he had glass packs or something in it, so it was pretty loud. Nice-sounding truck. And so I'd roll up to the drive-thru, and then there'd be, like, a chick at the window. Okay, it's, uh, you know, whatever dollar amount it is. And then, uh, and then... And then I'd see, like, her, like, you know, maybe walk away for a second, and then, like, her and, like, another chick would come back. And then, like, the, the second chick would start, like, meandering around, just kind of, like, pretending like she's doing something, like, I don't know, filling up the drink, even though the drink dispenser's right next to the first chick, so she could have done it, but she didn't. So the other chick filled it up, and then, like, another chick comes up, and I'm like, hey, wait a minute, are these chicks checking me out? Are they doing the thing that the dudes do? I'm like, do chicks do that? And I'm like, they might be. It might be because I'm in this truck. I was like, man, I need a truck. I never bought a truck. But, uh, you know, this video comes after I had, I have been at the pick and pull and I fixed the, uh, the Jeep. I just worked on the Jeep earlier today. So I'm still in the same clothes. I'm all drenched and sweaty and everything. But, uh, even I went to go pick up the Jeep, the ladies were like, man, whose truck's that? That's a nice truck looks really nice. Like, they're, like, complimenting the truck, and I was like, does it really look that nice? It's, like, 20 years old by now, but... So I don't know what it is, but chicks dig trucks, I guess. Even old ladies. Old ladies, young ladies, all ladies! They must dig the truck. So, I totally need one. Uh, but instead, I just get to borrow this one occasionally. And it is fun to drive, but the thing we're all really here for is the headrest review. Uh, we will get to that after these quick messages back since I went off on a tangent now. This wasn't the last brand new car my dad bought though. He did, as I've mentioned before in the uh, Challenger video headrest review, uh, when they shut the Fenton plant down, took the buyout and got a car voucher and then the final car he bought was the Challenger. 
And again, he wanted the RT V8, but uh, my mom gave him the business and wanted him to sell the car and was like, no, you can't keep that car. You should get it and sell it and you don't need a V8, blah, 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 blah. And so hey, all the time he's like, I should have got that car, should have got that car. So I don't know why he didn't, why he didn't just get what he wanted since it was going to be his last brand new car. So, you know, the only V8 he has now is this truck. Um, and having driven it for many, many years, we're going to get to the headrest review part of it. So, headrest review. What do I think about it? Well, it is a scotch, a scotch better than the Jeep that I reviewed. It only because it's ever so slightly squishier. But that's it. I think it was actually because of this cloth fabric type stuff that makes it slightly squishier. Whereas the uh, the Jeep had like a leathery material, not quite as soft. Or at least that one isn't. Because I do maintain the best head headrests are the BMW V38 and the Corvette. Middle of the road headrests, town car, this Dodge Ram. That my parts are falling, boys. My pick and pull parts are falling, and you know the bottom of the line, absolute worst headrest would be you know the Crown Fix. Very terrible, very short, very small, very hard headrests. Along with the Camaros, very big and hard headrests. These are not adjustable in any way, shape. But, which is what, why I find it interesting, because the Corvettes are not adjustable at all, but I do rather like them. I think they're really high up there on best headrests. And this one's, eh, it's between the middle of the road headrests where I would rate it, like with the town car, and above, you know, the worst, the Crown Vic and the Camaro. So it's in there with the Jeep. It's maybe slightly better than the Jeep's headrest, because it is a little squishier. And that's even without adjustability. I think if you could adjust this thing, it would be better. Or maybe if I was just a little shorter. I think if you're at my height, it's okay. If your torso is taller and like your head's way above the rest, I think this thing would be horrible. But I'm pretty much the exact height I need to be for this headrest to be, to, for me to give it the rating that I'm giving it, which is, you know, on par with the Jeep, scotch better than it, not quite as good as town car and certainly no BMW E38 or Corvette so alrighty I think that will do it for now so if you liked this video and you want to see other headrest related content stay tuned because we have many more coming I'll catch you boys in the next video Peace.